Hey, it's Sean from Crafted Elements, and in this video, we're gonna be using our eight by eight by four pot mold or five-sided box mold to make a pot. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna make a lamp, which is gonna be really cool. Here's a pull from this mold that was done in completely clear resin. And effectively what we're doing is we're creating a hollow box that we can put over a wood base that has a light in it to create a resin lamp. Uh, the only considerations with this, of course, is that you wanna use a uh, deep pour or a thick set resin. We're using the Total Boat Thick Set product, which can be done in one to two inch pours. Um, because this mold is significant, uh, a significant part of this mold is silicone, we actually have a three quarter inch um, space all around and at the top, this should be a safe product to use uh, without creating too much heat that would ruin our cast. Uh, these molds also come with these cool wooden boxes to keep the mold uh, stable while you fill it with resin or concrete. In this case, you can use cr concrete with these molds as well. Um, and all I've done is I've taken 64 ounces of this Total Bolt resin, split it amongst uh, four or five cups in all colors that work together. We got some blues, a purple, some silver, and a white. And what we're gonna do is we're really just gonna essentially do a dirty pour. Uh, mix this um, in here, let the resin do its thing, and pull it out, see what it looks like, and effectively create a base and a table lamp with it. When you're doing it this way, you know, with all these different colors, um, you don't really have much control over the end product. You can sort of pick the layering, um, but you are gonna have a lot of uh, the resin mixing. So what we're gonna do is we're really just gonna start off and start pouring. I've already, pour I've already sprayed a mold release in here to make sure that we can demold our product once it's done. And the pigments I've used are alcohol-based pigments as well as some black diamond uh, pigments. But I haven't put a lot of the pigment into any of it. As you can see, it's fairly um, clear, I guess. Um, it's very, very opaque. Very, very clear, I should say. Because we do not want to have them completely see-through, but we also do not want um, we also don't want it to completely block off the light that we're going to be putting on this. As you can see, this is not a scientific process. We're really just kind of pouring what we got in different layers and in different sections of the mold with the idea being that, um, certain colors, if we put them in one section, are gonna more or less stay in that section. Like I said, it is gonna naturally mix as this heats up, which is cool, which is what we kind of want anyway, to give us a, a cool textured effect. Um, really, the only, you know, things you have control of over here is, um, you know, which colors you're going to use, not so much where they end up with in your pour, but I think that's the cool thing about making these lamps. Uh, the other neat thing about this mold is you can use three quarter inch thick um, live edge wood, for example, if you wanted to have this lamp or making a box because it is a box mold. Uh, you can actually cut three quarter inch wood, slice up, uh, slide it in there, and then pour the resin around it. So you end up with a wood and resin box. That's it, we're done. We've poured all of the resin we've got. 64 ounces total in this mold. And if you want to go ahead and stir it a little bit or, you know, s you know, bring up some of the colors with the, with a stick like this, you can do that. I, you just don't want to get too crazy with your, your stirring because if you end up stirring it too much, you're just going to end up with a single color uh, as all the resin and pigment mix together. So I think that's good for what uh, the effect we're trying to achieve. Now this particular resin sets up in 24 to 48 hours. So we'll come back in a day or two, demold it, and then we'll make the base and attach the light, see what it looks like. We are back the next day. Our resin is set in our mold and it's hard to see on the camera, but the resin did get a little bit hot. It's really not, it's barely noticeable, but just around the corners you get some curling up and that typically happens when um, there's a lot of volume of resin and uh, it's not necessarily a deep pour resin, it gets hot. 
um, but I think this is perfectly acceptable for this one because I was planning on routering uh, around the edges and then uh, doing a quick sand anyway. So uh, let's get to demolding this and with these silicone molds it's ridiculously easy, especially if we used our spray mold release. Ugh. All right, our mold, nice and clean, and our piece. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, see-through. I probably should have made it, put a little bit less pigment in it, but I still think it turned out really, really nice. You got some blues, some whites, some silvers. Um, so what we're gonna do is do a uh, bevel these edges with our router, and then we're gonna come back and uh, put, the, put it on a base and attach the lights. Now this base I have pre-prepared, and basically it's just a piece of maple and I've gone ahead, uh, cut it to size, a little bit bigger than the, uh, the finished piece of our, our resin. And I ran it through the router to give it a nice um, chamfered edge around the top. And then what I've done, um, just for the sake of the video, is I've used a, I think a 1 8 uh, diameter rounded top bit to create a groove in the bottom of the wood. And I've done that because if you're putting a light inside here and the light that you choose is not battery operated, but it's got like a little wire going to it, then that's gonna allow the, this platform to still set level and then you can hide the wire uh, through the bottom of the wood. And then finally, um, you wanna get the wire through the top of the uh, wood. So you're gonna take your drill bit and then just go to the end of that run that we routered in there and go right through the wood and then that'll give you a full channel to run the wire if you choose to use um, if you choose to use lights that require a wire. All right let's get this um, resin block routered on the edges and again you don't have to do this you could just do a quick sand to get rid of the meniscus here on top which is that little um, you know part of the resin that comes up with a mold and it's a little bit sharp so you can Take that down however you would take it down. Some people use a carving tool. Some people just, you know, take a sander to it. So I'll usually just do a quick sand uh, on the on an angle and then uh, router it out. So let's go. Uh, let's go do that, and we'll get this thing ready to mount. Taking off the top lip and the meniscus here, just so it'll sit flat on my router table, so I can go and uh, I can go router this edge off. All right, so we've uh, taken this through the router, given it a nice rounded edge all around. You can see it's no longer a super sharp square. It's nice and soft and round everywhere. And then I sanded the entire exterior from 120 and 220. Um, and I didn't go any further than that. You could certainly, if you want to get this a really smooth and, and glossy, uh, you can you know keep going up. Um, what a lot of people will do after this point is top coat it with another coat of resin, basically pour clear resin over it and that'll make it really pop, really glossy. It'll also fill in all the pinholes and stuff that have been left uh, 
from having any of the uh, exothermic reaction and the epoxy mixing any bubbles that got trapped in there. Um, but I'm not gonna do that because uh, I'm actually just gonna use uh, a clear coat paint, uh, basically a spray paint and that'll clear coat the entire thing and it'll effectively look like a, a, a nice shiny glossy piece. And it's also gonna clear coat the base at the same time uh, to really give us that finished look. So, um, Two considerations, because I, uh, you know what, let's talk about battery, or let's talk about the lights first. Amazon is a source for lights. Honestly, there's all these Chinese imported lights um, that are super cheap, that are perfect for these types of models and these types of lamps. Uh, you've got multicolored strand lights, and these are actually lights on a, uh, on a, on a rope, so to speak. And you can just cut them as you need them, and that is a plug-in device. So it does require a wall outlet, comes with a remote, you can change the colors. There's things like these cabinet lights, uh, which is actually what I'm gonna be using. And these are neat because they are battery operated, so we don't actually need any uh, wire going to this. So if you recall in uh, earlier in the video, I routed out a channel for the wire just to show you how to do it, but I'm not gonna actually need it. I'm just gonna use these battery powered lights, which require three AAA batteries each, and they are remote controlled and multicolored. And we should be able to fit four of them within this section here. So with that uh, to be considered, because they are battery operated, we are going to uh, want this to be removable because if the batteries ever die, you wanna be able to change the batteries. Um, otherwise, if I was using wired lights, I would literally either super glue this or um, CA glue, or I would use epoxy resin. I would use a little bit of epoxy resin and literally glue it permanently that base so it's never coming out. Because if you have an LED light in there that requires a wire, it's never gonna be changed. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about, you know, this thing falling off the base, etc. But because um, I'm not going to be, or because I'm gonna be using battery operated lights, I wanna make this removable. And there are different ways you can do this. You could use uh, dowel pins, uh, do, holes in the base, holes underneath here, and then have little dowel pins. That's probably a little bit more advanced for most than most people need to do. I'm just gonna use two screws from underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead, trace this out, center it approximately, and um, I'm gonna trace it out, and that way I'm gonna figure out where the, um, the screw holes need to be, and we're gonna screw from underneath and affix it, and then come back and do the final touches. Now that we have our pre-drilled holes, we're gonna go ahead and affix these lights to the interior. So we've screwed this together now and you can see it's all one piece. And the final thing to do is finish it. Again, I'm going to use a thick uh, clear spray paint, uh, clear coat product, but you could obviously um, use like a Rubio Monocoat or even oil it, or if you wanted to do a, a resin top coat, basically just clear resin, pour it all over, get good coverage and let it set. And this thing will be as glossy as anything. And then we'll, Give it a try in the dark and see what it looks like. I'm using a Verathane triple thick one coat finish in a clear satin. So it's not gonna be really, really glossy, but it's obviously gonna be glossier than what it is right now. And you'll probably wanna do this in two or three coats, just spraying it lightly. And then if you wanna make it look even better at the end, you can wet sand it.
And while that's drying out there, I just wanted to mention another option with this mold. Clearly it is a pot mold or a flower pot mold or rather a five-sided box mold. This is what you get, as you can see from, our, from this uh, piece and also the piece that we just pulled out in the colorful resin. Um, so you could certainly use that to make, you know, a box like this. Um, and you can even integrate wood into that. If you have three quarter inch thick wood, you can set that in the mold before pouring your resin. But I wanted to actually point this out that there's an alternate way to make these lamps. You could actually make a clear box like this to guarantee that you're going to have extremely high light transmissibility from your lights inside. Um, and then you can give this an entire sand to make it a matte finish. Alternatively, you can do that same thing, but then pour colored resin over this shell. So effectively, you're gonna, you know, do a dirty pour um, over this shell and coat the entire thing in colored resin. So you've got clear resin on the inside, which makes up most of the piece, and then your colored resin on the outside. And that's gonna allow greater light transmissibility with these lamps. So it's just one thing to keep in mind and some different uses for this, uh, this pot mold. All right, we're all done. This uh, clear coat is nice and dry and we've got a little bit of a sheen on it. I think in hindsight, I would have uh, done a little bit more sanding of this box or uh, done the uh, resin clear coat, just because you can still see a lot of the pinholes from the uh, leftover from the resin um, while it was in the mold. Um, but I think it still looks good. And it's still gonna obviously operate as a lamp and I don't think anyone's really gonna notice uh, as, as makers and artists, we're kind of perfectionists when it comes to our own work, but I think it looked pretty good. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking to buy one of these molds to make something like this, we've got a couple of different sizes of both the pot molds and box molds to make different things uh, like this lamp and different resin sculptures, dioramas, things like that. You can shop online at craftedelements.com and don't forget to follow us on YouTube at Crafted Elements and happy making. Mm -hmm.